Is there any objection? There is objection. I call on Government Order of the Day for the Address and Reply Debate. Adjourn debate on the motion for an address and reply to His Excellency the Governor-General's speech from the throne and the amendment proposed thereto. Dr Jackie Blue moved the, amendment, the adjournment of the debate and therefore she has the opportunity for first call. Dr Jackie Blue. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It is a true pleasure to speak in this address and reply debate. The Government was elected in the general election with a mandate to get on with the business of making New Zealand a successful place to live, work and bring up our children. Mr Speaker, New Zealand is a better place than most countries. The debt crisis in Europe and countries like Greece demonstrate what happens when you don't act on debt. The national debt government believes that as a country we must get our debt under control and balance our books. This is crucial to allow us to grow our economy, create local jobs and enjoy higher wages. The national-led government is determined to keep on top of the debt, keeping it below 30 per cent GDP. We have been and will continue to be responsible managers by restricting debt. We are determined to get back into surplus and we have a plan over the next three years to build solid foundations for growth and more jobs. We have made a great start. Across the board, income tax have more than compensated the vast majority of income earners for the rise in GST, meaning they have more, more money to spend in their pockets. Around three quarters of earners now pay a top tax rate of no more than 17.5% on their income. The average wage has increased 10% in the past three years, and take, that's taken into account tax and inflation. Superannuation payments have gone up 19% over the past three years, around double the rate of inflation. The married couple rate for superannuation, for example, has gone up $166 a fortnight in three years. We are working hard to lift the long-term performance of the economy and create jobs and creating an environment that encourages economic growth. We are focused on protecting jobs while ensuring a fair wage. I am particularly pleased with the 90-day trial period introduced by our government. In 2008, we introduced the 90-day trial period for employers with fewer than 20 employees. Research by the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research showed that 13,000 New Zealanders got jobs through the 90-day trial periods. The government has now extended that 90-day trial period to all employers to enable New Zealanders to benefit from it, and they will, I'm quite sure. It's good for people returning to the workforce or those without a work history. It's good for youth, migrants and women. Quite simply, it's a win-win. Mr Speaker, New Zealand is well placed to succeed and create more jobs for New Zealanders, but we must back business. After all, it's businesses that create jobs. The Minister for Economic Development, Stephen Joyce, recently wrote an excellent opinion piece in the New Zealand Herald, and I'd like to touch on this. For New Zealand to be successful, we need more jobs and more higher paying jobs. Jobs provide the incomes that people use to help their families get ahead. Jobs give people the income to pay taxes for the public services like health and education that we value. Well paying jobs are what keep more of our people in New Zealand contributing to our country. And of course, keeping families together means our communities are stronger. But, Mr Speaker, critically meaningful, sustainable jobs will depend on businesses that provide services or products that people need or want. The Minister went on to say in the article that businesses depend on six key things – ideas and innovation to create the business that is in entrepreneurs and ideas people, money to build the business, access to raw materials, skilled people to work in the business the public infrastructure which businesses depend upon, such as power, broadband and transport, and most importantly, customers who want to buy the product. Essentially, if we want more and better jobs for New Zealanders, we need to encourage more businesses to be based here. To do, to do that, we need to make sure those six key drivers are there and easier for businesses to access. And it's all about encouraging an environment that is encouraging to entrepreneurs and ideas people. We need to ensure that we make resources available for businesses to use. We need stronger and more internationally integrated capital markets that provide money for investment. 
We need to ensure, Mr Speaker, our people have the right skills, and we need to remember that we have a small domestic market, so our businesses will need to access world markets a lot earlier than similar businesses in countries located in larger world populations. The Minister wrote in the article that we need to start a we can culture and move, move away from the we can't culture. We need to reframe the argument to why we should from why we shouldn't. It's about removing roadblocks and obstacles. The Minister went on to elaborate, elaborate that this can't do attitude was the prevailing attitude in the 2000s. Over that decade, we progressively boxed, our, boxed ourselves in more and more, so we depended on fewer and fewer industries based on the can't, what the can't group said. At the end of the day, the government of the day was pretty much took down to talking only about two of the key ingredients, that skills training and subsidising entrepreneurs that don't use resources. The Minister summed it up by stating that we need to stop the endless debate about which industry will save us and focus on all industries where New Zealand has a natural advantage. That's why, Mr Speaker, the Government is implementing and further developing its 120-point action plan that will build a stronger, more competitive economy. We need to encourage and develop all the opportunities if we are to prosper. The article by the Minister was extremely well written and thoughtful. I encourage all my colleagues to read it. Another win-win for, for New Zealanders, Mr Speaker, is the mixed ownership model which we told New Zealanders about a year ahead of the election. Mr Speaker, the government owns about $220 billion of assets, and we're expecting to invest another $34 billion of assets over the next five years. Rather than borrow more money to pay for this, we are extending the mixed ownership model to the four state-owned energy companies, that is Mighty River Power, Meridian, Genesis and Solid Energy. We are reducing the government's majority shareholding in Near New Zealand, which is already under a mixed ownership model and proven to be very successful. The PPP model will bring sharper commercial discipline, better performing companies as has happened in Near New Zealand. We have guaranteed to the New Zealand public that the government will be the majority shareholder and will maintain a minimum of 51 per cent shareholding stake. There will be priority for Kiwi investors, which will allow individual shareholders of, of around 10 per cent, further ensuring Kiwi control. Mr Speaker, it frees up about between five to seven billion dollars to invest in directly into the future investment fund for schools and hospitals and other productive assets. The mixed ownership model will help balance the books by 2014-15 without extra borrowing. And it does put Kiwis at the front of the queue for shares and investments other than finance companies. Mr Speaker, we are confident that these companies will remain overwhelmingly in New Zealand control. We expect New Zealanders will own at least 85 to 90 per cent of these companies. That's because the government will keep 51 per cent majority control. It's a good investment opportunity. New Zealand investors have about $100 billion sitting in term deposits, and there are tens of billions of dollars invested in other New Zealand and other, and by other New Zealand investors, such as KiwiSaver, New Zealand Super, ACC, the Government Super and Iwi. We will be able to fund new assets, such as broadband, schools and hospitals, and without borrowing more. We told New Zealanders about a plan a year ahead. There was no subterfuge. We were up front and clearly spelt out our plan. It's a smart policy that will strengthen New Zealand's economy, and a stronger economy is the only way we will create jobs, boost incomes, and provide high-quality public services that New Zealand needs. Thank you. Call the Honourable Cherry Anna Turia.